Welcome to Charts Today. My name's David Linton and today's edition for Monday the 22nd of March comes to you from London. And quite a lot of red on the screen this morning. Uh, market still a little bit overshadowed by uh, coronavirus rates in Europe at the moment and we will take a look at those stats at the end of this session. So uh, the dollar is continuing its strength short term bullish. Remembering this is my weekly, daily and 60 minute uh, view of the market, long term, medium term and short term views with the point and figure targets corresponding. So we are seeing this reversal in the dollar's fortunes. It's definitely made a low uh, earlier in the year. We can see that now by the price action, the, the high, the higher low and the higher high. Dow theory tells us that is a turnaround and we are now moving above the cloud into bullish territory on the medium term chart. So dollar bullish is the theme for 2021. Looking at the euro, uh, we are below the 119 level, so the euro is weakening significantly, moving below the cloud. Uh, euro weakness quite key there. Sterling sitting at 138.63, uh, that stronger dollar weighing there, and against the uh, euro, we're sitting at 116.50. The uh, uh, sterling's march above the euro just continuing there, flat the last few days, but medium term gaining and of course vaccination rates in the uh, UK helping and uh, we'll take a look at that again at the end of the session. Bitcoin is at sitting at $57,000 bullish on the medium and long term charts. Short term we are just seeing a little bit of bearishness below the cloud but to all intents and purposes we are going sideways. The S&P 500 index ended fairly flat on Friday. Slight down week when we look at the weekly candle there uh, and we do see here that on the chart we do still have these upside targets. Uh, so that's quite key. The market did make a new high last week, but only to uh, reverse away from that. But the fact is, is that we are still bullish on all three time frames there. The Nasdaq is less bullish. Uh, we haven't managed to get anywhere near the high that we made in February, and we are looking for signs of a breakdown. A low below this level would be um, bad for the Nasdaq. We do have downside targets uh, some 13% lower on the chart. So uh, short term, we are just holding the bull trend, but the Nasdaq is looking more worrying uh, than the uh, than the main market in the US. Looking at the futures, uh, we are slightly higher today on the S&P and the Nasdaq future is up half a percent. So that's looking a bit better. The VIX volatility is actually up uh, a few percent. So we are just seeing that turnaround there having had benign market conditions. We are now just seeing uh, recovery in the VIX, which that's not good news for the market uh, this week. So just looking a little bit worrying. The FTSE uh, future is down two thirds of a percent. So UK just struggling to move there. Uh, in Germany, the future is down half a percent. The DAX uh, cash market is relatively flat and the CAC current uh, down 0.6%. So just struggling to make that new high there, that's quite key. Just can't get back into uh, that territory hitting some resistance. And of course, we are seeing lockdowns in Paris at the moment. So that's possibly having a bit of an effect on the French equities. Uh, looking at Japan, we're down 1.2% there. The Hang Seng uh, down just over a third of a percent. And in China, we were actually up, bucking the trend here. We had had a relatively uh, poor uh, few weeks. March hasn't been a great month for China, but the long term targets are still very much there. The Sensex in India was down 1%. It's not looking so strong there. And in Oz, we were uh, down uh, two thirds of a percent. Uh, we'll look at the energy mix in a minute, but looking at gold, we're sitting at 1728, fairly flat at the moment, just turning slightly bearish. Targets in both directions. We have activated this upside target, so I'm 7% higher to 1860. Uh, so that is suggesting that gold did find a flaw in March. So we just need to keep an eye on that. Silver actually down quite sharply this morning, down 3%. So not looking as strong there. Copper holding its own, having had an amazing run the last 12 months. So uh, that's quite key. U.S. bond yield sitting at 1.68% on the 10-year yield, so still looking pretty strong, holding on to bull trends there all the way, and the t uh, the 30 year uh, bond yield down some uh, two and a half percent. So we are just seeing that deteriorating and we do have a downside target there. But the trend for bond yields is relentless at the moment and we are just seeing that um, move. Uh, Brent crude uh, had a big sharp fall last week, so we are just seeing that big fall there. 
hitting the sideways market, the sideways range here. The big thing is, can we hold this 62 level? We fall below 62, that's going to be bad for crude oil. We will be putting out a report on crude this week. Key thing is, will we go lower and activate these downside targets? Uh, and if we look at uh, WTI, picture is quite similar there. US Nat Gas uh, is down this morning. We have been pretty bearish on uh, gas. Uh, but we do look like we might have found some support here uh, and finding a floor. Watch for a break above that sort of 257 level. We do have upside targets. So we actually, uh, our call on gas to clients this week was for US, US gas was actually neutral. Coal's looking more bullish. These are all covered in our weekly report, as is emissions. Uh, and if we look at the gas prices that we're up this morning, but we'd have given our calls for gas this week uh, out to clients already this morning. And the same with TTF. Interesting patterns just looking on these gas markets. And if we look at uh, the uh, seasonal just breaking down below the cloud as well. Uh, German power holding this morning at uh, up half a percent. Uh, so we've got targets here, quite interesting there on the upside. And if we look uh, to the quarterly contract, uh, just holding as well there. Power markets seem to have got off to quite a good start this morning. And we look at Nordic Power up about 1.5%, both on the year and the Cal. Again, covered in our report to clients today. And taking a look at the coronavirus stats now, uh, this is cases uh, with data from yesterday. This is uh, in all versions of Updata now have uh, this data available in our world from data. Here we see... Uh, just by ranking the columns, we see the worst. So if you like, the worst performance is the best performance. So uh, we are seeing a kick down in France, and that's showing up in the cases. So uh, that is good news. Not so good news in Germany, though. We've just really still seeing that rise there. But of course, this is a blip. The trend is very much up in France. Germany, it's accelerating. Um, really not good in Bulgaria. The, the biggest rises were in Belgium. Uh, so we're seeing a kick up there, so that's not good. Uh, and Ireland also we're seeing um, a move up, not Irish cases as well, so not good news there either. Uh, the UK f continuing to fall but flattening, sitting at 80 per million people and the US sitting at 163. Again, the shape is more important than the number, but the reality is uh, these rates are much, much lower. I mean, if you look at uh, Hungary, for example, case rates are 10 times that of the UK uh, in terms of um, number of people per million population and Bulgaria looking very worrying as well. Moving through to deaths, uh, rather morbid but uh, you can't just ignore the stats and uh, we see Germany, uh, the deaths have been falling, the same in France but the reality is it's slowing. The UK we're looking at one, uh, 1.3 Germany 2.2 and in France 3.2 so uh, France we're seeing at twice the death rate of the of the UK so that uh, the UK has obviously had a, a very bad start to the virus but with vaccination they seem to have really got things under control anyway keep an eye on these stats they're qu uh, quite interesting to see what's going on and uh, if you're in the UK, you, you'll see mostly your own national coverage, and it's really quite handy to be able to look at what's going on in neighbouring countries. That's it for today. Until tomorrow, happy charting, and if you're in Europe, stay safe. Until then, see you tomorrow. Bye for now.